bum, bum. Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance. Bum, 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 bum. Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance. This is a sponsored video. Somebody paid me for this. Okay, they paid me the big bucks. And if you want a sponsored video, look in the description, send me $50, and I'll make you a sponsored video. We're going to talk about a silver stock, silver miner, that's based in, well, it's headquartered in Canada, but it's got most of its operations in China. That's right. Now, I don't normally look at silver stocks, okay? Why? Because honestly, in my opinion, it based, most of them just basically track the price of silver, right? Let's go check out this stock, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So Silver Corp Metals, ticker symbol SVM. Now, if we zoom out, we can see that this stock has been publicly traded for a decent amount of time. You can see the stock was uh, trading at least back in 2005. It's got a market cap of $523 million. It's got revenue of 208 and it's got positive net income. Wow. I've seen so many clown stocks out there. At least they make money. Okay, that's pretty impressive. You got to give it to them. They're making money off of mining silver and gold and a couple other metals. Imagine how much of a pain in the butt that is to actually become profitable doing something like that. So I give you guys a uh, a big round of applause, applause there. Okay, they even got a little dividend. They got a four PE of thirteen and a PE ratio of twenty four. We go down and we read a little bit more about the company. Silver Corp, together with its subsidiaries, engages in the acquisition, exploration, development, and mining of mineral properties in China and Mexico. I'm pretty sure they just had an impairment on their Mexico uh, venture, but we'll see. They're primarily based in China. Now, number one, if you're terrified of investing in China, this is a huge risk. Okay, number one, China risk. If we go to war with China, and trust me, Canada would probably side with the United States. I would imagine. Okay, if they didn't, then they're a bunch of stinky, floppy faced scoundrels. But if we went to war, the United States, China would probably or seize all the operations of this company. Okay, so that's one thing right there. That's a risk you have to consider, especially if even if they just invade Taiwan, you know, or they do something, this company could potentially be affected by that. That's the first risk. The second risk is this company is very volatile. The whole mining industry is volatile because think about what they're doing. They're just mining metals. What if the metals go down in price? Uh-oh, you're going to have the same amount of fixed expenses unless you shut, uh, slow down operations. But if metal prices go down and they stay down for a long time, you might have pretty significant losses, okay? So basically, when you're investing in a company like this, you have to hope that, you know, there's no war with China. You have to hope that, or even if there's some kind of drawn-out drama, you have to hope that there's not a prolonged bear market in silver. And you have to hope that the company continues to be able to find enough metals in the ground in the mines they have operational to make it worthwhile. So there's a lot of risks, okay? But they, they have a couple of mines, okay? They have, uh, it holds interest in the Ying Project located in Ying Mining District in Henan Province, Henan Woman Hater. Uh, Gaoqing Mine located in Guangdong, China, blah, 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 blah. They have, they have a couple mines, okay? Now, if we go and look at the stock price, I want you to notice something. We go back to 2005, okay? Stunk price goes up massively, 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 massively. What happened there? Well, we go back and we see, oh, there's a pretty significant spike in the silver price back then too. Hmm. Could that be why the stock price went up? Potentially. 2006, 2007, 2008. And then it massively collapsed. And then it ran up again in 2009, 2010, and the beginning of 2011. Oh, look at that. That's when the silver price went up too. And then you look and you go back and you see, oh, it looks like it went down a little bit. And then it spiked during the, the lockdowns. It, it, it kind of tracks the price of silver, which makes sense, right? Because they mine, they, they mine more than silver. <laughs> it's, it, they call themselves silver core, but they actually mine more than silver. But overall, I mean, it's just tracking the price of silver. So you, when you're doing something like this, you got to ask yourself, uh, what's silver going to do? And I can tell you, I have no clue what silver is going to do. Okay. This stock could go up massively if silver suddenly becomes very popular again. But if it doesn't, if silver doesn't do well, okay. Now, if we look at silver's recent performance, let's look at silver in the last year. Okay, silver is basically 
This is a little okay. Remember, Jeremy Lafave bought silver. Remember that silver has gone up just a smidgen in price, maybe a couple of percentage points, but nothing insane. Okay, so you kind of have to understand how the silver market works and factor that into your assessment of this company. But we can look at the overall financials. So we go, we look at the quarterly revenue. Let's see, let's see what we have going on here. So overall, like you know, the revenue goes up, it goes down, but overall their revenue has trended up over time, which is a good thing, okay? But recently, they're, uh, they've are they had a pretty significant plunge in revenue. Gross profit. They actually have a gross profit. How shocking. Let's go ahead and look at their gross margin. So their gross margin has maintained, well, it's it's definitely gone down over the last couple of years. It was roughly in the you know fit, low 50s, high 40s. And it's steadily gone down. And, and if you think about it, like they, what what competitive advantage does a silver miner have? They it's the same product. The silver miner here, the silver miner there. They're all mining silver. I mean, I don't. Maybe there's like different grades of silver. I don't know. But it's freaking silver. Okay, it, it, it's hard for companies like this to really distinguish themselves. Have a moat, a unique product, right? The only moat I guess this company has is, is at least they make freaking money. Okay. Uh, so overall, they have operated. They have po- they've mostly had positive operating income. So this is more of a developed, you know, obviously functioning mine that is that has proven reserves. You know, it's not this company that's just out there exploring and you're basically all in. And you know, hopefully they find gold or silver. And if they don't, then you lose all your freaking money. Okay, but this this is it, this has been a pretty solid company for a while. Now going into the future, I have no idea. Uh, so their operating margins have been okay. Their profit margin has uh, definitely taken a hit. I believe they had to do an impairment of a uh, an exploration that they were doing, a site they were doing in Mexico. We'll see, I guess, later. But uh, they had to do some kind of impairment, and that hurt their margins. So they basically like were trying to develop a site in Mexico, and it didn't work out, and they had to write it down. But here's the company's website. You go to silvercorpmetals.com. Obviously, you can read about the company. It's headquartered in Vancouver. It's got a 17-year track record. They are profitable, okay? Uh, China is a top destination for forward investments. Since 2003, we have been at the forefront of mining investment in the country, establishing ourselves as a trusted partner in the industry. And you can see their production and inventory. So they they even have uh, estimates of what their silver production is going to be. So they're projecting they're going to be mining more silver in 2023 and 2024. And you can see all the inventory had. They have proven reserves of 115. I guess that's in miller tons. Doesn't even say. Where does it say? Gold converted. Let's see. It doesn't even say how I I would assume that's or ounces. Here we go. Okay, they have 115 million ounces. They have measured and indicated resources of 210. So they have way more than I guess they kind of thinks there. And then they have 126 million ounces that are inferred. So it looks like, according to them, they have a lot more silver, silver equivalent inventory that they can mine for the foreseeable future. So keep that into consideration. Uh, If you look at their operations, overview, let's see. Here's their main operations, okay? They have a mine here in Ying Mining District, seven underground mines, with over 300 veins, 15 years of mine life remaining. Okay, that's good. Drilling discovered new gold and gold copper structures. You see, like this business, it's like really, uh, it's really uh, risque. It's like how much silver is actually there? We think there's this much, but we don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'd be scared to own a company like this. Uh, and it's all based on the freaking silver price. Then you got this uh, GC mine, 13 year mine life remaining. Uh, exploration upside remains significant. So, I mean, you know, they, they've got some operations going on. And I believe they also just acquired another company that has a, they acquired another company that has business going on in the Philippines. So, okay, let's look at their most recent corporate presentation. Let's see if we can uh, see what's going on. So profitable silver producer position to grow, but it's in China. Uh Uh-oh. All right, compelling value for profitable and growing silver producer. They have a market cap of 69. I've never seen a more bullish sign in my life. Cash of 210, value of mining equity, 122 million, and mining assets, which is completely cut off, but okay. (laughs) 
Uh, zero debt, no financing since 2010. Okay, okay. They pay a dividend and they do st they share buybacks. I've seen worse investments. Okay, <laughs> I've seen worse companies. Uh, we've already seen where their minds are. They talk about the China advantages. Well, it depends on whether you hate China and you think it's going to go to zero or not. But there, there's risks to mining in China, obviously. You know, if, if Taiwan ever happens, uh-oh. Okay, but they talk about their mines. They talk about their EBITDA, which is garbage. I would ignore that completely. Free cash flow. We, we know they're profitable. We saw that. They've been making money for a long time, and they have mines that are going to last for a while. Uh, they're comparing themselves to it looks like other mining companies. Oh, look how cheap we are. Well, usually they're cheap for a reason. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ying District. Growth through drilling, optimization, expansion, and consolidation. They drilled, looks like a million meters in 2020 to 2022. They're going to be drilling more in 2024. Uh, they're optimizing their mines. I mean, nothing like out of the out of this world crazy, okay? Building silver inventory while growing low-cost production. So it, it looks like they're definitely, I guess this is years on the x-axis. I can't see because it's freaking cut off. Hold on a second. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I can scroll down. Duh. So obviously they're they're definitely uh, growing their reserves. And the funny thing is right here, look at this. So we can see they had all these inferred resources, right? And then in 2023, it looks like their inferred resources suddenly dropped. That's a risk right there, right? They thought they could potentially have this much somewhere in the ground, that much ore or oil or not oil, uh, metals in the ground, and then it massively dropped. You got to kind of like factor in that risk of maybe there's not as much there as you might think. Okay. But overall, they, they've definitely been, uh, there's definitely a lot of inventory, it looks like. At least guaranteed, we know there's 115 uh, million ounces. Oh, I'm a clown. I can just scroll down. I didn't even realize that. Incubating world class opportunities. Silver Sand Project. Hmm. Karangas Project. So they're developing more stuff. Okay. That's good. Let's see, mine optimizations, advanced construction status. Yeah, okay, so like they're a profitable company with a decent amount of reserves. They have a proven history of profitability. The question is, what's going to happen in the future? I don't know. What's going to happen to silver? That's the problem. You don't know where silver is going to go. I have no idea. Well, happy people, okay. We construct green mines that generate, oh my God, that's garbage. Oh, look who owns us. Who cares? Let's see. Appendices. Leadership. Okay. Okay. I don't know anything about those people. Production. 2023 production. So it looks like in the nine months into December 31st, 2022, uh, they produced 893,000 tons of ore. Looks like... Hmm. The vast majority of it's, well, there's silver, lead, zinc. So it's not just, so there's actually a slide later on that breaks it up a little bit more. But uh, yeah, let's, let's find that slide actually. Where is it at? Where is it at? Okay. Revenue by metal. So basically, this is a silver company with other base metals and gold is like immaterial. So I, I would not look at the price of gold and use that as a proxy for the, this company's value and how much money you can make from this company. But basically, like, if silver's price goes up massively, they're probably going to have some positive revenue effects from that and more profits, okay? And then they have all these base metals, which is a combination of the things we talked about earlier. So overall, it's been pretty consistent. Basically, majority silver, and then gold is clownishly small, okay? Realize metal price. Yeah, see, it's all based on the price. I, I don't know where this. I don't know where the price of lead, zinc, and silver is going to be. I do you know? I have no idea. Okay, lead and zinc inventory. Yeah, they definitely had some kind of like markdown and inferred. That's interesting. So, <laughs> okay, all right. Let's see. Operates through, are held through Chinese entities, significant employers, taxpayers, local economies. Okay, let's go ahead and read their financial report. So here's their most recent financial report. Let's look at the auditor's report. What do the auditors say? We've audited the financials. 
In our opinion, the financial statements print, uh, fair, present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the company as of March 31st. Okay, the auditors are saying the financial statements look good. There's always a chance they could be wrong, but the auditors have looked through it and they said it looks pretty good. It's most likely good, okay? So the auditors are given the sign-off. They're audited by Deloitte in Vancouver. So if you're worried about Chinese auditors, well, this is Deloitte, one of the big four in Vancouver. And they've audited it since 2013. Independence Pro, opinion on internal control over financial reporting. We've audited. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Uh, in our opinion, the company maintained in all material respects. Okay, so this is not tattooed chef. Like their their books are good. Their accountants are pretty solid. So you can reasonably trust the numbers. So let's look and see what's going on here. So year over year, revenue's down a little bit. Probably has something to do with silver prices. What do you think? Production revenues down. Production costs are up, but nothing crazy. Depreciation amortization is up. That means they put more assets into service. My, mineral resource taxes are down. Immaterially, though. Uh, general and admins down. So overall, their income went, their revenue went down, and their expenses went up. So that leads to less profits, obviously. Okay. Let's look at, uh, so that's income from mine operations. Let's look at corporate, general, and admin. So they've, they've cut corporate costs a little bit. Property valuation business developed down a little bit. Foreign exchange gain. Oh, foreign currency gains. I wouldn't count those in the future. That can, that can go both ways. Loss on equity investments designed as FTPL. So they have some kind of investment. I guess we'll see later. Uh, loss, share of loss and associates. Okay, those are probably subsidiaries that they own, but they don't control, which shows up on their income statement. Uh, and then I see a big thing right here. Impairment of minimal rights and properties, 20 million. So if they did not have this impairment, their operating income from operations would have been about $53 million. So this is a one-time thing. Okay, one-time thing right there. They would have had $53 million of income had they not had to impair that. Okay. I mean, they're still they're still doing okay. Finance income, finance costs. Oh, look at that. Income before it, they they generated looks like more money from interest, probably. Income tax expense. It's pretty it's pretty high. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty high income tax expense. Yeah, for some reason they, they paid more in taxes uh on less op on income before taxes. That's interesting. I would look into that more. It's, that's interesting. Okay, so revenues down, expenses are up, and they had a one-time charge, which is important because that's probably a big deal, a $20 million charge. Uh, let's look at the other comprehensive loss. Currency translation adjustment. Woo, baby. They had a big loss on currency for the year ended March 31st. So you, you can see the cyclic, cyclicality. Is that how you would say it? cyclicalness of currency. Look at that currency translation adjustment. They had a huge hit from, you know, currency fluctuations. Massive hit. That's for the year. Ended March 31st. For this quarter, they actually had a gain. So whatever currency uh, flip-flopped. So keep that in mind. Currency can definitely affect the earnings of this company pretty significantly. I mean, 45 million, that's nothing to laugh at. Uh, that's a big thing I see there. That's pretty crazy. Uh, okay. So that's a risk this company can face. Let's look at the balance sheet. So we got cash of $145 million and short-term investments of $57 million. That's basically the two big things, cash and short-term investments. That's great. They have total current assets of $219 million versus current liabilities of $41 million. Their balance sheet in the short term looks very good. Their long-term assets mostly consists of in, uh, investments in associates, uh, plant and equipment, and mineral rights and property. So you can see that went down probably because of that impairment. But overall, their total long-term assets are about $400 million, and their long-term liabilities are 96 Okay, the balance sheet doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that bad. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see this company... Unless this is all a lie, but I highly doubt it is. 
I don't see this company going bankrupt within a year. They they're pretty solid. Okay. <laughs> I've seen worse. So the balance sheet looks good. Cash flows from operations. They have pretty healthy cash flows from operations. Okay. And you can see in the reconciliation, the reason their profits are so low, but their operating cash flow is higher. On the reconciliation, they're adding back significant non-cash expenses, which are depreciation and amortization. Uh, looks like a uh, loss on equity investments. We saw that. And they add back the impairment because it's a non-cash loss. They're adding it back. So overall, they, they, their cash flow from operations has gone down, but it's still pretty healthy. But of course... They also have lots of capital expenditures. They got a, it's a mining company. They got to buy equipment. They got to buy freaking mining locations. Yeah, they're, they're going to have a lot of capital expenditures. So you can see while their cash flows from operations is solid and you see a big difference between net income and uh, cash from operations, it's just a timing difference because these capital expenditures eventually get depreciated. So you're going to see a big cash flow here. And then over time, it gets expensed and shows up here as an ad back on the statement of cash flows. But overall, I mean, like they have overall, they they only use twenty six million in investing activities, and they generated eighty five million. Okay, uh, and they also redeemed some. Uh, they redeemed some short term investments, obviously, probably to help pay for some of their uh, capital expenditures. But overall, like they're not imminently going to go bankrupt. Uh, they're paying dividends. They're paying more dividends and they're buying back shares. Okay. I mean, nothing crazy on here. Let's see. A little bit of share dilution. So basically all the shares they're buying back are to cover for the uh, shares they gave out previously <laughs> for stock options and restricted stock units. <laughs> That's basically it. So they're buying back shares, but it, it's mostly to cover for stock options. So, I mean, I guess that, I guess that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything crazy. I've seen worse. All right, let's see if we can see anything crazy on here. Details of the company's significant subsidiaries, which are consolidated as follows. So you can see they own 100% of the vast majority of these. And 46%, like somehow I guess they still control them. But you can see all these sub-entities. So all of these entities are actually mixed up. When you look at the balance sheet, this is all these entities combined on the balance sheet. So some of these might have some, uh, some of these might have different pictures overall. But overall, the company combined looks pretty good. But you have to look at each operation in general. But these are all the sub-entities. Silver Court Metals China, Victor Mining, Guangdong. I'll show you a Guangdong. <laughs> uh, investments and Associates. These are companies that they ha are invested in but don't control. They have these, New Pacific Metals and White Horse Group. See so, yeah, they don't control. They have a lot less ownership. That's why they're accounted for differently. If they control the company, they just combine it as if it's one big company. If they own part of a company, it actually gets uh, recorded as an investment and the income or loss from those companies show up on the income statement. So that's something you got to keep there. Uh, let's see. Business combinations, acquisitions. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. This is their depreciation policies. They depreciate buildings over 20 years. Land use rights over 50 years. Woo! Okay. 50 years, huh? Well, that's how you show a profit. Let's see. Uh, Try to see if there's anything like that stands out here. There's some, there's some interesting stuff in here. Let's see. Segmented. Okay, so they actually break out the segments by uh, by location. So you can see that Henan loaning, the mining, this is where the big daddy is right here. Okay. This is the big mine right here. Revenue of 174 million versus Guang Long Dong of 33 million. That's where all the money is. 62 million of income came from that mine. And the net income from that big mine is 53. So this is the big daddy right here. This is the one you want to pay attention to. For the year ended, yeah, that's basically the big daddy right there. 
Uh, let's see. Segment for assets. Okay, this is just broken down assets and liabilities by segment. I don't think any of these are going to go bankrupt. I mean, it's 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 one entity, and they, they're doing pretty good when it comes to uh, – they're doing pretty good. <laughs> I wouldn't be worried about that. Sales generated. Okay, obviously, we know silver and – other base metals are the big ones. Really, it's just lead and silver are the two big ones, it looks like. So those are the two prices you want to pay attention to when you're looking at this company. Uh, government fees, income tax, current deferred. Yeah, let's see. Current deferred. That's interesting. Their taxes are a little bit higher, even though they made less money. Even their current taxes. I guess maybe they have to pay a higher tax rate. Reconciliation, statutory. So the Canadian tax rate's the same. Hmm. Let's see. What do they do? Income tax is statutory. Foreign tax rates different from statutory rates. Let's see. Change it on deferred tax assets. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. It looks like... Income before taxes, income tax expense. So it looks like the big, the big change came from change in unrecognized deferred tax asset. So a, a deferred tax asset is taxes that you're going to save in the future because you took uh, you took less of a tax deduction now, so you're going to save more in the future. So maybe they had some kind of change where they reduced their deferred tax assets. Maybe that's why their tax expense is a little bit higher. But uh, I mean, it's not gonna break. It's not gonna break the bank. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, they have net operating losses. Okay, they're they actually go into pretty significant detail. Most of their short term investments are in bonds, yielding five to thirteen percent. What in the holy hell are they putting their money in? <laughs> okay. That's a pretty high interest rate, but it's not a big part of their investments. It's mostly money market, which hopefully the money market isn't a clownish money market. Let's see. During the year ended March 31st, the company recorded impairment charges of $2.9 million against bond investments issued by Chinese real estate development companies. And one Swiss financial institution. Hmm, I wonder which one that was. <laughs> they're put, I don't know why they're – this is like weird. Why are they putting their money in these high yielding bonds? That's odd to me. I don't like that. <laughs> okay, that's weird. Whatever. Uh, investment into New Pacific Metals. New Pacific Metals is a Canadian public company listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, by the way, of common director. During the year, the company acquired 309,000 common shares of Newag. Okay, so they bought a little bit of that company. Investment in Tencorp. I wonder what they mine. Hmm, gold? Is a Canadian public company. Let's see. Okay, so they, these are just companies they invested in. Let's see. Mineral rights. Property rights. <laughs> do, 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 do. Leases. Where was that impairment? Here we go. During the year ended March 31st, the company completed the review and evaluation on the results of the drilling program completed in fiscal year 22. The company does not plan to undertake further statement work at the La Yesca project. That sounds Mexican. As a result, the decision was taken to impair fully the value of the La Yesca pro. So they abandoned the project in La Yesca. La Yesca, right here. That's why you had that impairment charge. So that's gone. It's over with. Kaboom. That's what happens when projects don't work out. You see a huge expense hit the income statement when they get written down. Okay, so I mean, overall, like, I don't think this thing's going to go bankrupt. They have proven reserves. They're going to be mining into the foreseeable future. There's some significant risks. Number one, if you're scared of China, that could hurt you. Uh, they're pretty subject to foreign currency translation adjustments. Uh, 
they're very subject to the price of silver and other base metals, zinc and lead. There's a lot, like, I don't, I, it's hard to value this company. Like, you, you gotta have to just guess where silver is gonna go and where lead's gonna be. And there's all sorts of unknowns. It's very risky. But uh, interesting company. I don't really look at miners. Let's see. Oh, Lord, a Canadian silver. <laughs> this one actually makes money. I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, wow. I own seven. Good for you. Silver, my liver. Were you impressed with my analysis, Fabio? Are you buying this stock? Shut up, silver is king. I, I, it's just, it's a shiny rod, guys. Come on. Unlike most, they actually, they're actually money. They are. Yeah. Roughly half is silver. Let's see. I'm going to break Strongman's arm like a twig. Okay. China. Fabio. I wonder if Fabio is going to buy this. <laughs> Let's see. SVM has a dividend, so it's a buy. <laughs> That's true. They have a dividend. You should buy it. Let's see. Silver and gold are heavily manipulated part of the reason the U.S. wanted off the gold. They wanted off the gold and silver so they could just print money. to pay. Basically, it was to pay for the Vietnam War. That's what they did. Oh, we could just uh, have a free-floating currency that isn't tied to gold. We can produce as much as we want. Yeah. Individual miners. All the risk of commodities with the operational risk of money and its capital is extensive. So question about how their cash flow would expand relative to inflation. It is very capital intensive because like, they have strong operating cash flow, but you also see that it's capital intensive because they have pretty significant depreciation expense and they're dumping a lot of money into mining. It's freaking mining. Of course, it's capital intensive. Inflation bros could probably get more efficient through properly sized. Man, I'd rather just buy the freaking commodity, man. <laughs> Adjusted earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, uh, selling general administrative expenses and cost of goods sold. <laughs> oh, revenue, revenue. <laughs> uh, mining company in China. I don't see an easier way for me to get my cheeks clapped. I mean, they've been doing pretty well. I mean, like I've seen worse. Taiwan is an island full of Asian people who speak Chinese. If America starts bombing it, who's really invading who? You know, you know what my thoughts are? It's inevitable that China is going to take it over. It's just a matter of time. Like, if you think in the long run of history, who's going to win? China with 1.4 billion people, that's right next to Taiwan, or the United States. I mean, it, it may take decades, but China will win. Okay? I'm, that's my guess, okay? It's like Afghanistan. Like, if we were, of course we were going to lose in the long run. Strongman, what does it mean to be 100% up your today, but still 15 down on all-time charts? Uh, that means you subscribe to Jeremy LaFufu. Let's see. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Can't wait to see you make a video. What is he doing? What is what is Jeremy doing? Tenex! I made so much money! I'm a millionaire! He's such a scammer. Jeremy said, of course he is. I mean, anytime stocks go up, he pretends like he's making all the gains. When in reality, he's lost millions of dollars. He, is, he has not made a dollar investing in the last uh, 10 years. I guarantee it. Like, if you look at his total returns, I guarantee you he has not had positive returns. After a tattoo, Jeff, there's no freaking way. Since you can get taxed from retirement, might as well put it all on tattooed Chef. That's true. Maybe I should do that. At what point do you admit you were wrong on Palantir? It keeps going, it went up! It went up! Oh my God, it went up! I'm not going to answer that comment. That's beneath me. Bro, what is your year-to-date return? Uh, let's go look. ET, ETF. Year-to-date. Oh, you want to see some hot gains, ladies and gentlemen? Boom, 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 boom. Whoop. And I'm sure there was a dividend paid somewhere in there, so I'm actually higher. I'm actually doing better than that. Boom, 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 boom. My wealth has increased by 12% in the last year. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, only up 95% since the Great Reset. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be so poor. Those are just the worst returns in the world. 
but but QQQ and I'm more. So so you're stupid. Now what balance sheets can we look? Yeah, it's it's a legit company. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call it a clown stock. Did you see Jeremy last video when you know what you guys make me want to respond to it now? Hey strongman, I bought silver now. Trucker Doug bought me. <laughs> you should put your emergency fund in silver. His new video, he called everyone out talking. Oh my god. I, I think he misses me talking about because I don't really talk about him that much. I, I'm like, I'm kind of like, because now he's not buying like such horrible stocks that it's like easy to make fun of. But I think he misses me making fun of him because back in the day, like the amount of clownery he engaged in was like out of this. Like it was like, it was almost like he was doing it on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like, okay, you bought Meta. Okay, you bought a uh, Revolve or whatever. Okay, yeah, you're a loser. Oh, he's talking trash. What an idiot. Your wealth has gone up more if you include what you have deposited. That's true. Your VT gains are nothing compared. That's true. If I had just gone all in on Palantir, I would be so much richer. I'm just an idiot. That divorce is going to hit hard. Pushing sensitive sensitive subject there, bucko. Anyway, that's a paid video. If you want a paid video, you send me money, and I will make you a personal video. LaFufu bot. It doesn't matter, bro. Palantir went up. That's all that matters. Nothing else matters. Do you understand? Do you understand? That's it. <laughs> He's such a scammer. He's such a scammer. If you don't, if you if you haven't seen it by now, I don't know what to say. I miss out on buying. Now it's at nine, and I'm crying. Oh well. If you went all, you'd be down. Oh yeah, all those clowns are still down. Trust me, they're freaking clowns, and it's only going up because of AI. That's it. The the like the company's barely profitable. All their profits come from interest income. It's a bond fund, number one. Number two, their revenue growth rate is massively declining, okay? And number three, a lot of those stock options are going to be exercised now that the stock price is going up. So the more the stock price goes up, the more those get exercised and the more you get diluted by employees. Yeah, NVIDIA's a clown. NVIDIA's like clownish. AI, AI, AI. Such a joke. It's the next clown bubble. All right, guys, that's it. Have a wonderful night. Cheers.